Okay, we're pretty much done. Now is the time to generate the XML code. Let's make the skeleton first. Launch the designer and open our window UI. Add a new text edit field. It was already there. And I guess I forgot to remove it after testing and testing if it works. Anyway, add a new text edit field. Call it UI XML. And save. This UI will contain the XML code generated for us. And remember that our data model, not our proxy model, but our data model, emits a signal called data changed. If we check the models module, we see data change emitted here whenever set data is called. Whenever that signal is emitted, we want to respond by updating the XML code in our UI. And we do that by connecting to that signal which we do by using the static method from QObject class whose signal, it's our data model signal, which signal data changed which contains two parameters QModel indices from and to we pass the same index to both of them to update the same item on the view and which method will receive this signal it's gonna be our own update XML which is up here it prints updating XML and then it sets a temporary XML code I've written by hand. So we run this, we select something and we change an attribute. We see that we get XML code updated. But it's actually very dull, it's only black and I want to use syntax highlighting. So I'm gonna promote a solution I made before. If you go to my blog, which is here, and you scroll, you click PyQt, and then you scroll down to the bottom. You see XML highlighter using Qt built-in Q syntax highlighter class. Click on that, and here's how you use it. And here's how the code. So we call we copy the code first, and then we paste it up here or in a separate module, which would be the best to do. But I can't be bothered with that. And once we have the XML highlighter. Let's check how to use this. We create a new text edit. We al we already done that in our UI file. And then we create a XML highlighter. We pass the UI XML's document object to it. And then we set a plain text. So all we need is actually this. Go back and scroll down to our constructor and at the bottom paste this. We create a new XML highlighter and we pass our UI XML's document object to the XML highlighter. Run and click on something, make sure the XML shows and we get syntax highlighting. Awesome. We can also change the colors of these different parts up here you have the XML element format it's bold and green you have attribute format it's blue you have value format it's red and then you have comments which is gray okay we're gonna create the method which will generate the XML code of our node hierarchy the best way would probably be to make two classes one for a one for node writing or node XML writer so a class called node XML writer and then another called node XML reader but I'm gonna leave that a task for you guys so instead I'm gonna show you how to use the cute XML package so first of all we need to create a QDOM document think of this as your XML file it's a virtual file, think of it like that. And then we can call some factory methods of that document like create element, create attribute, create node, etc. We create an element with the type info and we return it to node. This actually creates something like this, an empty node in the XML file and then we append it to the file. And then we start looping on the children of this node and call recurse XML. And we pass the document and we pass the node so it can be parent. And this is how that method looks like.
just gonna rename parent DOM to parent and it creates another element it appends it on the parent it calls our attributes method it receives every attribute and then for key value key is the name value is the value of our attribute we call a method called set attribute on the node we created by calling create element and then we recurse the children of this child by calling recurse XML this is basically the code to generate an XML which will actually contain or reflect the entire hierarchy of our data model I've already fixed the update XML method in our controllers file so all I do now is call self root node as XML to get the XML and then I set it as plain text so if we run this we select a node we rename it to renamed and press enter you see that it instance instantly generates the entire hierarchy of the XML or our data model as XML and we see that the name contains renamed up here let's also change the position to 10 99 and 5 you see that it instantly updates the node called renamed we might also want to call update XML down here so as soon as we run the application it generates XML great now we can generate XMLs out of our node hierarchy as I said before the best way to do this would probably be have to probably use a class called XM node XML writer and node XML reader so you can implement more sophisticated writing and reading capabilities which will be needed when we implement enumerator objects because enumerators are just integers and you might want to write them out as string objects like one two etc so you'll need a class for reading and writing and with that let's go on to enumerator attributes on our node class okay Python has no support for enumerators by default we have to use some different tricks to emulate them we will go through the code step by step first of all write this and then make a call for it and pass 0 as keyword 1 as a keyword 2 as a keyword and run this okay so we get this in the console Whoops. let's go to the next step print also the range of the length range length enumerated run this now and we see a pattern so 0 matches 0, 1 matches 1 and 2 matches 2 so let's make a list of tuples out of this pattern we do that by calling the method called zip we pass enumerated to the first argument and range to the second and if we print the result we see a list containing tuples where 0 matches 0, 1 matches 1 and 2 matches 2 finally create a dictionary out of this so dict and pass the zip result to it and if we run this we see that 0 contains the value 0, 2 contains the value 2 and 1 contains the value 1 the sorting order doesn't matter so we've created a dictionary on the fly containing the right keywords and right values we want to use the keywords as properties and values as property values in a new type we create at runtime we do it like this so again the result of the dictionary goes into enums and then we create a new type with the name enum and we pass the dictionary so the new type actually has those as properties and values so now we can write this below the declaration enum 0 enum 1 and enum 2 
print them, we see that the console indeed prints the correct numbers. So we've emulated the numerators, but we also want to actually keep the string representation of each item. And we do it by, remember, dictionaries are actually, or dictionary keywords are the property names and dictionary values are the property values. So if we pass enumerated here into a dictionary keyword called names, we can then print enum names and pass an enum value such as 1. 0 and 2. Run this and we get the string representation now which will be used when we're filling our combo boxes to actually represent the data instead of filling it with zeros and ones and twos.